Hey everyone, so we just discovered that Kaido does not in fact have a dragon devil fruit, but instead a mythical fish type devil fruit. Now this seems like it makes absolutely no sense at first. Would this mean that he himself is a dragon who happens to also somehow have a fish fruit that we haven't seen? Or could it mean that he has a sea dragon fruit and that is simply going to be technically categorized as a fish type fruit? I think no, by far the most likely answer is that Kaido will have a mythical koi fish fruit. Now, I didn't know the lore behind koi fish until I saw comments pointing it out, but as soon as I learned what the mythology behind the koi fish is in Japan, I think it 100% confirms the notion that Kaido is going to be a koi fish user. And before we get into that, make sure to subscribe for more One Piece content like this in the future. Now, with this video, I'm going to break down why this koi fish decision is such a brilliant decision by Oda, and why this actually speaks volumes about Kaido's character and his story, even if you may not realize it at first. And just in general, it could have a lot of meaning behind what we should expect from the rest of the Wano arc. So, to start with, let me quickly explain the mythology behind koi fish in Japan so you understand what I'm talking about, and why it makes perfect sense that a dragon like Kaido would technically have a fish fruit. So, as the legend goes, at one point, there were thousands of koi fish swimming up a river, until they came upon a waterfall. Now, as soon as they saw this huge obstacle, the vast majority of fish, of course, decided to turn back, and go back to swimming with the flow of the river. However, 360 koi fish were determined to continue on, and so they pushed on and swam as best as they could, fighting against the water to climb up the waterfall. And of course, one by one they dropped off, until finally there was only one single koi fish who was able to make it all the way over the top. After seeing that, the gods transformed the fish into a dragon for what the fish had achieved. That is a very prominent myth or idea in Japan, it seems, the notion of swimming upstream to become a dragon. And you can see why I think it is so incredibly likely that Kaido's fruit is the koi fruit. If you search anything related to Japanese dragons and fish, the legend of the koi fish is the only connection between the two concepts of fish and dragons. That's not really, you know, there's not really a lot of other options out there. And we can even see the reference to this myth from the start of Wano, with the very first thing the Straw Hats do on arrival to Wano being climbing the waterfall on the backs of koi fish. Now, even if you're still doubtful or have your own theory in your head, let me start explaining the significance of Kaido actually being a koi fish, and the greater meaning this would carry with relation to his character and story, and how it perfectly fits his character and story as we already know it, and you may change your mind. So first of all, this is something I talked about in depth in my One Piece villains analysis, and that's the fact that Oda almost always ties the villain's abilities to their character. For example, Moria used shadows because he was a shadow of his former self, Doflamingo used strings and puppets because he is a manipulative puppet master, Luchi was a leopard because he was a hidden assassin among the shipwrights, Eno had lightning and omniscience because Eno was a god, Wapo could eat everything because he was greedy, Big Mom can create life because she is a mom, so on and so forth. Now, Initially, I thought Kaido was pretty straightforward, maybe even a little lazy in terms of his abilities, like Oda's concept for his abilities, and that Kaido was simply a dragon. Now, it's not even really lazy, as that does fit, as our initial perception of Kaido is simply that he is the world's strongest, he's the most invincible beast of beasts out there, he just seems like an absolutely unbeatable force of nature, and so he basically had the dragon zone, since dragons are kind of just the ultimate symbol of power. However, the more traces we've gotten of Kaido's story, the more hints surrounding his past, his rise, his current motivations, the more potential for nuance that we've gotten, now with the assumption that his fruit is not actually just a dragon, but rather a simple koi fish that turned into a dragon, oh man, this suddenly puts everything into perspective with what Oda is very possibly going for with Kaido's character, and what we are very likely going to be seeing of Kaido and his past from here on as well as some implications for Wano in general. So first of all, what is the story of the koi fish about? It's about fighting against adversity and competition, pushing and pushing till you've pushed past everyone else and reached the top, and in the process you've become great, right? Out of thousands of koi fish, the lone one who's able to push up further past everyone else and become the only dragon. So the very first time that we are introduced to Kaido, what is highlighted first and foremost before getting to the part about him being, you know, the world's strongest creature, unbeatable in a 1v1, etc. What is highlighted before all that is the fact that he has been through many, many battles. 
many failures, many struggles, and has challenged the best over and over again. No matter what he went through, or what challenges he undertook, nothing was able to kill him. Only after that explanation are we then introduced to Kaido today as the world's strongest creature, supposedly. Now, it was always interesting to me that people have often strangely used Kaido's battle history as a way to question his strength. How strong can he be if he lost and struggled so many times? It's as though just because Kaido is a villain, we have to wave away the notion that Kaido might have had a journey to becoming considered the strongest. But that was always an interesting introduction, building up to the reveal of his current perceived strength and his current status by first highlighting the struggles he's gone through before this in the past. Now, on top of this, when it came time to discuss the stories behind each of the Yonko, and what led up to them becoming a Yonko, in contrast to someone like Big Mom, who was described as a natural-born destroyer, a natural-born monster, Kaido's story is that he was actually just an apprentice on Rox's ship. He didn't necessarily have the same status on that crew as Whitebeard and Big Mom. He was just an apprentice. And after the crew disbanded, Kaido built his reputation gradually through his individual strength till eventually he had gained enough respect that he was called a Yonko. And just looking at his crew, it completely fits, as we are told over and over and over again that Kaido's crew is composed of former captains who he defeated, others who were aiming to be Pirate King who he defeated, all of them eventually stepping in line till here we are today with him considered, at least by reputation, to be the world's strongest with every one of these former captains that he defeated bowing down to him. That is the story of the Koi who got to the top of the waterfall. That is the story of one person pushing past everyone else, outstripping the competition till he alone is at the top. Obviously, Kaido isn't exactly Pirate King yet, but we'll get to the broader implications of the story of One Piece in general in a minute. What I mean is that at least in terms of Kaido's personal story so far, he is not framed as a natural born monster like Big Mom from the start. He was just an apprentice on Roxas' ship, so it's very possible he didn't have some, you know, 500 million berry bounty by the time he was like 10 years old like Big Mom did. I think it's very possible that at the time that Rox was defeated, at the time that Big Mom gave Kaido, the apprentice of this disbanded crew, this koi fruit, Kaido himself was, metaphorically speaking, at this time, a koi. He was not a dragon yet. His story from then on may very well have been this extremely battle-heavy uphill climb, challenging everything and everyone, being defeated, being captured, escaping and trying over and over till through his individual strength, he gained status in the world, till he built up this crew of de defeated competitors who now bowed down to him, until he became recognized as an emperor of the sea. And I wouldn't be surprised if early on, maybe the koi fruit itself literally did just function as a koi fruit. I wouldn't be surprised if Kaido couldn't turn into a dragon right away, but rather at some point in his personal growth, at some point perhaps after attaining a certain level of strength or perhaps spiritual growth, he may have unlocked the fruit's full potential and have become able to transform into a dragon. And of course, as I've talked about in other Wano videos, specifically those related to Conqueror's Haki, a recurring notion throughout Wano has been that you can't have too many conquerors, too many kings, there's only really room for one. That reflects on the Pirate King struggle in general, that only one fish at the end of the day makes it to the top and becomes transcended. And it's something we've heard multiple times in the series before, that the Pirate King, the concept of what the Pirate King is, is the conqueror who rises above all other conquerors. Now, obviously that's not Kaido's full story, obviously Kaido's not going to get to become Pirate King and live happily ever after at the end, but the way he talks as though there can only be one conqueror at the end of the day, that in itself plays into the legend of the koi fish to a degree. Kaido wants to be the only one at the top. Everyone else can be his subordinates and exist underneath him. Now, with all that being said, maybe you're not 100% convinced that Kaido has a koi fish fruit, but at the very least, I think there is strong evidence that it would fit with the hints of what Kaido's story is so far. I think until we get an actual definitive backstory for Kaido, like we did for Big Mom, most of this speculation surrounding how well the koi fish legend may parallel Kaido's own journey, yes, it will simply be speculation, but I do think it's definitely fair, based on the traces of Kaido's past we've gotten so far, to believe that he has the koi fish fruit. Now, that being said, the fact that the koi fish legend is coming up in Wano has me very excited beyond just Kaido because of what it means for the significance of this arc, potentially. Now, I have said in many videos that I believe that Wano is set to be an arc about growth of spirit and about struggle with a villain that is positioned very well for that sort of storyline. 
I also believe that Wano is positioned as the ultimate test that the entire New World has been building towards, a sort of proving grounds of whether or not Luffy has what it takes to stand out from all the other typical rookies and prove that he isn't just playing, you know, little pirate games as Kaido says. This is the time where they can find out if he can actually go up against the Yonko and come out on top. So the fact that Wano begins with Luffy going up the waterfall on the back of these koi, that may seem like a fun little reference to that myth at first glance, but in reality, now knowing the scale and the stakes of the conflict that are about to take place at the top of this waterfall, and knowing what Luffy is set to accomplish by the end of it, I view this as a very blatant metaphor for the idea that Luffy is going into this arc as the proverbial koi fish and will come out of it as a dragon. This arc is the culmination of hundreds and hundreds of chapters of storytelling from the start of the New World, and it is set up to be the point that Luffy and the crew take a great leap forward and probably stop being considered just up-and-comers, but rather serious candidates for Pirate King, at least by those who actually matter in this world. And lastly, I think it should be said that in general, the journey to becoming Pirate King is very similar to the journey of a koi fish becoming a dragon. Thousands are sailing upstream at first, just as countless pirates took to the seas to find One Piece in the first place. Then, upon hitting a waterfall, most koi fish give up and choose to simply go with the flow, whereas a few hundred continue on, trying to fight and swim upwards, one by one falling off till only one reached the top and became the dragon. In the same sense, as you go further in the Grand Line, many give up on becoming Pirate King, and then those that actually continue to fight for it end up falling one after another in the intense competition for the top, and of course, at the end of the day, only one will actually become the king. So overall, I think the possibility that Kaido is a koi fish is very, very strong. But on top of that, just the fact that the legend of the koi fish is being so strongly referenced at this point in the story does bring out some interesting ideas in what this story could mean for Luffy as well. Not to mention how the whole journey to become Pirate King in general fits the story of the koi fish. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, then definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And you can support me on Patreon to get my extended thoughts on this topic and all future topics. Thank <laughs> you.